Good morning, my pirate people. According to international law, once you're 1,000 miles offshore, every vessel is considered a pirate ship. So I'm a pirate. And so are you. Arr! <laughs> Today is day nine of our mission to cross the Pacific Ocean from Mexico to French Polynesia. I gotta show you this globe. It's fully sealed, but spins when it's exposed to light. And I feel like a sorcerer every single time I hold it in my hands. It's called a MOVA globe. And when I used to work in oil and gas, one of the execs had it sitting on his desk. And every time I had a meeting with him, I'd see it and dream of living on a boat and sailing the world. When I quit, he actually gave it to me. And it's one of the few things that we'll be bringing from this house to the boat once we start cruising full time. I actually reached out to MOVA to help sponsor this video because these things are freaking awesome. Awesome. So consider supporting our channel and check out MOVA at the link below and use code SHE for 10% off. There's over 40 designs and they actually make a bigger one too, which I really want. All right, back to the video. Yesterday, we played with the world's brightest flashlight. You like the egg soft there, she? I like what? it a little soft. <laughs> yeah, I don't want we shined it all over the place, up into these epic sails into the night sky, 80,000 lumens, blinded everybody during night watch. Normal boat spotlight. Ace Beam X75. Here's the world's furthest shooting flashlight. And today is emergency communication device day. We're gonna go over all of the different and redundant emergency communication devices that we brought aboard. And also, it's new shirt day. I've been wearing the last one for five days. I only have two left. 13 days divided by three. This one's gotta last at least four days. Let's go do some breakfast first. What's yeah. your theme today? To oh, shit! Dude. <laughs> Oh, I just almost slipped, but then I recovered. Today is Emergency Communication Devices Day. It includes EPIRBs and like personal locator beacons, satellite communication devices, sat phones, and radios. Yeah, VHF radios. Good question. Now breakfast. What is it? I don't know. It's a big one? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. There you go. I never would have imagined we'd catch so many fish on this passage. Thanks for the bank, boys. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Look at that. A massive wahoo just swimming around 1,100 miles from shore. It can't always be rainbows and breakfast sandwiches every day. Here's a fresh wahoo that we caught this morning. Favorite fish. So good. When the ocean gives us fish, breakfast ceviche it is. So our normal means of communication while cruising the Pacific is Mr. Starlink. Right back there, we named her Maritime. So we get super fast speeds. It's 250 bucks a month. We used to have the RV version and you can clearly see a difference in the speeds between those two. The Maritime version also uses a ton more power. Let's go take a look. That little speck right there is when the booby pooped on it. We gotta kick the booby off because he's pooping on Maritime. So we actually did lose a little bit of service at that time. There was a bird that just sat right on the front section right there. Go booby, go! Get! Bye bye booby! But generally the uptime has been pretty good. I'd say like 99%. So we'll get a few drops here and there, but all of us on the boat, we've got at least eight phones, iPads, computers, everything running, streaming Netflix, downloading movies, surfing the web, phone calls. It's perfect. But what do you do when Maritime gives out? Or if we lose power, like if the boat is sinking or we get struck by lightning, then what do we do? What do we do, Jamie? What do we do? We got them in in range. We have a solar charger. We've got a whole assortment, baby. VHF radio, Garmin inReach, Garmin inReach, Ocean Signal personal locator beacon, ACR personal locator beacon, or Iridium Executive. Let's go find Colleen. Get her to help us. Call, what are you doing? Making toast. I had to go get some sparkling waters to bribe her. Ah, I always wanted to look at this. So to activate it, you just open that and press a button. We can do tests on them. Really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be wonderful. This is Colleen. Please. You guys met her a couple of videos ago when we did the get to know everybody aboard video. The interview. The interview video. <laughs> Colleen works on super yachts. She is the safety officer. Are you a safety officer? Oh, yeah, you were? you're right. She's actually saying, I was joking because like we make fun of her on this boat that she's the safety officer because she's always making us turn on the nav lights and put on life jackets and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be perfect for her to help explain all this emergency communication gear. 
Let's start with like the cheapest and most easiest. I'll talk about this because it's really simple, okay? This is a VHF radio. The handheld ones, you get a couple miles of range. The big ones that go all the way up the mast, you get about 20 miles of range. You need roughly line of sight, super tall mast, and another boat with a super tall mast that raises above the horizon. They can see each other, so you can talk. So we've got one down at the desk and then one over here as well, right there. Boom, Ray Marine. The normal station that you're supposed to be on is channel 16, emergency channel. If everybody's on the same channel, you know that you can contact other vessels from it. We usually just put it on 16, and it won't let me go there because I don't know how to use this. Oh, here we go, 16. And you just hang out there. This is where people will broadcast and be like, mayday, mayday, or pan, pan, which pan, pan Security, means. security. Security is like letting you know that I'm about to do some maneuver. Pan, pan is like, I'm in trouble, but I'm not sinking yet. Yeah. Mayday is like, it has gone down. Mayday, 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 mayday. Grab all the stuff and get in the life vest. <laughs> life raft. You shouldn't be chatting on channel 16, so if you have to contact someone, you should say, motor vessel smiley, motor vessel smiley. This smiley here. Parlay revival. Change the channel one, two. And then you can continue your conversation. Oh, one more thing. A lot of VHF radios have this thing called MMSI. And it's basically an SOS button on the side that transmits through VHF. It's gonna do us no good at all out in the middle of the ocean because you need other people with VHFs with MMSIs to be able to continue to transmit that signal. So if we're in a crowded area, then my signal would jump to that next boat and continue transmitting on to everybody. Is that how it works? It's just a number, like the number of your vessel. So then it is your number, it's registered to you. Oh, so yeah. then like people can identify you. Oh, so then if your VHF has GPS, it will transmit the GPS coordinates mm -hmm. to everybody. Next one up is the Garmin InReach. Garmin InReach runs about 35 bucks a month for unlimited texting. This is the bare minimum that you should travel with. Here, you can hold this one. Oh, thanks. Isn't there an app to this that you can connect? There is. It makes it easier to like text. You yeah. don't have to text on the little arrows like you're playing Animal Crossing on GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> The Garmin InReach, it's a two-way transmitting texting device. There's a keyboard that pops up on here. You literally have to move around the QWERTY keyboard with this little cursor thing, which is very, 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 very annoying. A boat we met used one of these for weeks after they lost their mast in the Pacific. Garmin is like not a very good experience typing on the Garmin. You've got 130 characters. Total pain in the butt. But it's also kind of a lifesaver because if you drop your phone and all you have is this, you can still send messages. So there how does this operate off satellite? Yeah, so this is all satellite based. You can send messages. You can send your tracking location information so people can track you. You can receive weather updates, but it's all text based. This is the bare minimum. Even though we have all these other much higher tech options, we still keep one of these. This is grab and go, and no matter what, we can still get saved. The Garmin's also have an SOS option. I'm gonna be careful, okay, because I don't wanna accidentally press it. You open this pocket here, and then you push that button. Tell us, what are you gonna do when you see land for the first time? I'm gonna dive in and swim. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and then are you gonna come back to this boat? <laughs> no. no, no more boat. I'm done with the boat. We've been on this boat for so long, you don't understand. It's been nine days, okay? I have never done anything for nine days. The longest I've done anything was the last time I did a passage, which was like seven days. Isn't it eight? I actually don't mind the people. I really, I'm really enjoying the people, which is weird. I usually don't like people that much, but we can't go anywhere. I can't like go swim if I wanted to. Yeah, there's no McDonald's, man. I love McDonald's. How about we pretend it's McDonald's one day? and we can make McDonald's food. We'll sounds, make French fries That sounds too. so good. You know what? Let's talk about these personal locator beacons after lunch. So this is Colin. Colin is the reason why all of us are here. We're crossing this Pacific Ocean because it's his dream. We are day nine of roughly 20-ish days. How do you feel? It's been uneventful which is a good thing nothing's really gone wrong except the blowing out spinnaker so can't complain i don't know people, people are starting to get a little bit bored i think they just want to get there tell us about the eperp eperp stands for emergency position indicating radio beacon when you bring that across and you activate it and that sends a distress signal up to the satellites and down to the emergency response system and then they will start coordinating a rescue for your location and this is registered to the boat so it's registered to parlay, 
it knows my emergency contact details, it knows the type of boat, what color the boat is, all of these things to help aid the rescue. That's why it's really important you don't activate it accidentally because there's a lot of rescue response that goes into trying to find somebody. Even out here within maybe six to 12 hours, we should be able to uh, get assistance because there's ships and, and fishing vessels and stuff around us that can come to our aid. There was a boat just last month that was coming down this path, probably not more than a few hundred miles away from where we are right now, that had to pull their e perp because their mast fell down. Nini wa, what is it? Nini wahuni. Say it again. Nini wahuni. And Parlay, they actually did an episode all about them. This is the incredible story of survival of sailing vessel Nini wahuni whose mast came crashing down onto the boat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but the husband refused to abandon their home. The e perp called the mission control. Mission control got in touch with a container ship, diverted course to come pick up the family. And Travis, the father, he ended up motoring the boat a thousand miles back by himself. Well, day one, no mast, demasted. This must fucking kill me too. So this is absolutely a necessity to have on the boat. Green flash. Okay, and we're back. These are personal locator beacons. They go on your person or inside your life jacket or in a pocket or around your wrist. This one is the ACR Rescue Link 400s. Here you go, this is Colleen's. <laughs> she had to pay 400 something dollars for it. Ocean Signal, it's smaller. The battery lasts eight years, I believe. Colleen's gonna show us how to test it. Okay, to, to test mine. To test, press T for two seconds to perform self-test. Well, you're supposed to do it not underneath the solar panel. This should work. One, two, uh, oh, there we go. So you just hold this. It'll flash a light. One, two. I'm gonna be really careful when I show you this. Uh-huh, you... bleeding. <laughs> I'm not gonna press it on. All right, so uh, Colleen, you see her freaking out. Uh, she doesn't want me to activate this because her emergency contacts will be contacted. You have to remove this antenna like so, and then you come around this way, you see? And then as you raise that up, you push that red button and that's what activates everything. So let's just go ahead and put this away. <laughs> what are you doing, McFly? And then this one, similar. You take the antenna, you pull it out this way. You open this, and then that's where you push the buttons. And then we'll go ahead and test this one as well. It should say self-test. Press for one second to T. Okay, it flashed red. So we're gonna put this away and crank this back up. Let me show you this power bank that we have. This is for the grab bag. This is what we'll use to charge all those devices in case we have to jump in the life raft. And finally, we have the Iridium Executive. This is a sat phone, satellite data, and text. So you flip this antenna up and then it starts up. This whole thing is waterproof as well. There's also an app for the Iridium. You connect it to your phone. You can send texts from it. You can make calls from your phone but you can also make calls from this. Let's see if we can do a test call. Colin. Oh, Captain. Can I make a call on this? Everett. Hi, McFly. How are you doing? <laughs> All right. There's only 50 minutes that comes in his package, which is the most expensive one, actually. I think it's like 180 bucks a month. We're gonna swipe up. We're gonna hit call. Plus one, five, one, two, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Just gonna check for bullets. One sec. We've got these two sails wing on wing, so it blocks all of our center vision. Do you see anything? No. You know we had a boat. Yeah, last night. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, sit down, safety officer, and tell us what happened. Oh, that's a big deal. Just um, a fishing vessel. He was trawling, so that means he had a green light over a white light. Green over a white, trawling at night. Yeah, he just passed our bow. How far up? The closest point of approach was four miles. Not too close, but for being out in the middle of the Pacific where we've seen one container ship in the past week, that's pretty close. All right, I got it dialed up. We're gonna hit call. Hey, what's up? I'm calling you from the sat phone. Uh, hi. Hey, Mayor. Oh, Miss you. Hey. Wish sure you were here. We just wanted to test it, make sure it's working. Hey. Love you. Love you. Now Colin has 49 minutes left. When you want to shut this device down, it's kind of cool. You just like flip the antenna down and then it turns itself off. Cover. Boom. Is that the music on there? Yeah, it is. Oh, that's pretty good. It's all about redundancy. Starlink is our go-to, but if Maritime goes down, we can call and text with the Iridium exec. If we lose the sat phone, we can still message with the inReach. 
If that fails, in an emergency, we can pull one of the personal locator beacons. And in the worst case sinking scenario, the EPIRB will activate when it's submerged. That pretty much covers everything, so... Subscribe to Dave so you can watch him cross the ocean. <laughs>